investing by combining fundamentals with technicals. Presenting today is Mark Chaikin, founder and CEO of Chaikin Analytics. Now, as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and we will send a copy to everyone who has registered for today's presentation. Please submit your questions using the GoToWebinar chat window as I'll be available to respond to your questions. Now, before we begin your web the webinar, we would like to introduce our guest, Ed D'Agostino, to the webinar. Ed is the publisher of Malden Economics. And prior to joining Malden Economics, Ed was the managing director at a consultancy focused on business development in the financial sector. He has been instrumental in the startup and expansion of several businesses. Ed's clients, including hedge funds, lenders, investment publishers, relied on him to recruit and mentor analysts, develop controls and systems, and implement growth strategies. Ed and the growing team of analysts and financial editors at Malden Economics share a single-minded purpose to produce the highest quality investment publications in the industry. And now to get us started, here's Ed D'Agostino. Thank you, Joe. Uh, hi, everyone. It's great to see so many of uh, our, our Malden Economics readers joining us for this. Uh, I was introduced to Mark Chaikin by John Malden about a year ago. I think they met at a, a financial conference. And John suggested that I take a look at Mark's equity research system. And I, I have to admit, I was pretty skeptical initially because we get pitched all the time on supposed stock vetting or stock screening systems. Uh, and most of them, I have to say, are, are, are pretty light um, and, and not too reliable. So I was pretty skeptical. But since the uh, directive came from John, I took it seriously, started using Jake and Analytics. And uh, after a couple of months, I found it really to be indispensable and uh, asked my analyst team, uh, three of the, the guys on our analyst team, to sign up for Mark's service and use it in earnest. And again, after a couple of months, they all came back to me and said, we're using this personally and we're starting to vet all of our, uh, our research service uh, recommendations through this as well. Uh, so we just decided to formalize it. We've been using the system now for just under a year and uh, it's, it's made us all better investors. It's helped us with our timing and uh, I, I'm really happy to be introducing it to, uh, to, to everyone on this call today. So let me just tell you quickly uh, a little bit about Mark. He pioneered the first real-time analytics workstation for portfolio managers and stock traders, and that's now part of Thomson Reuters' institutional workstation. Uh, he's developed computerized stock selection models and technical indicators, including the, the check and money flow, which is one of the two signals that I pay a lot of attention to, um, and, and that's an industry standard now. Uh, Mark's been a Wall Street guy for over 40 years. He's been a trader, a stockbroker, an analyst, an options trader. Uh, he's the founder of Chaikin Analytics. And uh, uh, what he's going to tell you a little, about, a little bit about today is both his system as well as the, uh, the Chaikin power gauge, which is the other factor that I, um, it's a stock's potential. So I'll get out of the way now. Mark, you can, you can take it from here, please. Ed, thank you for that kind introduction. Welcome, everybody. I think we can fire our PR department, Ed, uh, and just engage you and really appreciate the kind words. Uh, today's webinar uh, is all about the checklist that I use and now uh, Malden Economics uses uh, to improve your trading and investing and the focus is that by combining fundamentals with technicals, uh, you get the best of both worlds and you really do put the odds in your favor. So uh, with no further ado, let's get started. And uh, I'd like to start by um, 50 years on Wall Street, I've survived 10 bear markets. That looked like it was going to be very relevant back in early February when uh, we were in the midst of a waterfall decline, but uh, I would encourage you not to uh, be spooked by uh, the people who you're seeing on CNBC now who are talking about 50% declines. Some of them are congenital bears. Other people like Harry Dent are sending out emails that would scare the pants off you. And we're going to show you a methodology and actually we're going to look at the stock market to begin the webinar and try and convince you that um, there are opportunities in this market on the long side and uh, my experience using technical analysis for 45 years give me confidence to speak to these uh, market 
uh, timing and market overview issues. Along the way, I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional investors, both colleagues and clients. And the reason that that's significant is because everything I learned from them in 45 years is embedded in the Chaikin Power Gauge rating, which I created in 2010. And it's really the culmination of my life's work. It's the reason I came out of retirement. I was retired probably way too early at age uh, 55 for 10 years. And after the financial collapse of 08, I felt that I wanted to give something back. So I started taking analytics with my wife, Sandy. We're now 27 people and growing. And we have a commitment to educating investors at all levels of sophistication from novices to professionals and teaching a methodology that we really believe in and now uh, of course Ed has just told you Malden Economics believes in it as well. Uh, the Chaikin Power Gauge rating and Chaikin Analytics is quoted in the media but more importantly it's also used by professionals like Paulson and Company and Soros and now Malden Economics. And we got this wonderful shout out from John Malden in his Thoughts from the Front Line two weeks ago uh, I'll just, uh, we excerpted a piece of it. I'm impressed by what Mark has done. My analysts are enthusiastically using Chaikin Analytics and his system has become part of our vetting process for evaluating potential investments. This to me is the ultimate kudu, the ultimate shout out and thank you John for that and to Ed for doing the hard uh, research to give John the confidence to say that. So in today's webinar, we're going to talk about my checklist, improving your trading and investing by combining fundamentals with technicals. And just to summarize, uh, we're going to talk about how you find bulls and bears with our 20-factor model, the Chaikin Power Gauge rating, and our proprietary relative strength indicator. We're going to show you how to use Chaikin Money Flow to anticipate future price movements and dramatically improve your timing with the six pairs of buy and sell signals that we include with Chaikin Analytics. We're also going to talk about playing good defense, how to avoid landmines that can destroy your portfolio and all the profits that you've built up in the course of the year, because as most of you know, it only takes one or two stocks to blow up, and we're going to look at a couple of them in the course of the webinar uh, to cause you sleepless nights and, more importantly, to cause you to lose money. And then finally, we're going to look at our earnings alerts and earnings season in general and how you can use options to supercharge your profits during earnings season. So we've got a lot to cover. And I'd like to start out by asking you to look back over the last three. Did Brexit, the Fed, and volatility have you spooked? If it did, please type a Y in the question box. And I'm seeing that a lot of you were concerned and spooked by the headlines that surrounded Brexit and all the volatility, and that's fairly typical. You're not alone. In doing these webinars, in talking to clients, uh, in our customer support sessions, we know that people are concerned about the state of the market and the state of the world economy. And this is, of course, what Malden Economics addresses so well. So I'd like to start off the webinar by focusing on the market and analyzing the market as it looks today through the lens of Chaikin Analytics. So here's how Chaikin Analytics helps you know where the market's headed. We have three proprietary indicators. Chaikin Money Flow, which we look at on the SPY, the uh, S&P 500 ETF, the most actively traded instrument in the U.S., been readily available on online brokerage platforms and the internet and other computer programs for over 30 years. Uh, but we'll show you how to look at it in a very special way as it regards the SPY. Second proprietary indicator is something we call the Chaikin Power Bar. And we're going to look at that for both the SPY and the IWM the Russell 2000 small cap ETF. The Chaikin Power Bar is available for every list ETF industry group in our system, thousands of them, 
and it basically shows you the number of stocks with a bullish rating in our 20-factor model versus the number of stocks with a bearish rating. And then finally, a very um, powerful technique that we started using back in December. We look at the Guggenheim Equal Weighted S&P 500 ETF with the symbol RSP. As most of you know, the S&P 500 index is capitalization weighted. Now, why is that important? Because in 2015, those infamous FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, accounted for almost two-thirds of the price movement in the S&P, and a lot of stocks got left behind. So uh, let's look at the S&P 500. This is a one-year chart from Chaikin Analytics. And I'd like to start out by looking at that W-shaped bottom that we experienced in January and February. Now, as you know, on December 15th, the Fed started raising interest rates. They actually raised interest rates for the first time in 10 years, and the market took a tumble. Even though everybody knew that the market sells off on a short-term basis, there was a lot of panic in the market. So we got a bottom in January on a pretty steep decline of better than 10%. And typically, over the last 10 years, any decline of greater than 10% has required a bottom in the shape of the letter W in order to propel a new leg to the upside. Declines of between 5 and 9.9 percent, especially since October of 2011, have tended to be V-shaped bottoms. Now what does that mean? It means that everybody who was on CNBC telling you to buy the dips was right. And it was pretty easy to buy into weakness. W bottoms are a little scarier and we had one back in August and September, that infamous August 24th, what I call Market Order Monday, uh, when the Dow futures were down a thousand points and people flooded the market with uh, market sell orders on ETFs creating serious imbalances. But the bottom that we saw in January and February was a lot different and it was different because of the check and money flow. In August, September, when you had a very, very steep rally from 1870 all the way back uh, to 2000 on the Spider or S&P 500 index, 187 back to 200, check and money flow failed to turn positive. It stayed red or negative below the zero line on that big rally. What did that mean? It meant the institutions were not participating. However, when you came back down and tested the lows, in the cash index, you actually equal the lows, but the spiders, because of that imbalance, you didn't come uh, quite down to the lows. Check and money flow was actually positive on that second leg down. In January and February, something very different happened. On that rally up off the 1809 low, check and money flow turned positive. That told us that the institutions were buying the rally. There was some short covering, but there was also some scrambling to get equity exposure. So when you came back down in February, February 11th, and equaled the previous low, look where check and money flow was. It was green. We're going to see this pattern recur in stocks. You get oversold with check and money flow staying positive. It's as reliable a buy signal as you'll ever get on the market. Does it work 100% of the time? No, but in normal markets, it's a very reliable indicator. And subsequent to that bottom, we broke out. I'm going to give Jamie Dimon credit for that. He doesn't want it. I'm going to give it to him. He came out on February 11th and said, I'm buying $25 million worth of my own stock, JP Morgan Chase. It helped turn the market around. But more importantly, check in money flow spiked up and stayed up so that as we broke through various resistance levels and ultimately worked our way back up to 2100, 2110 where the market had peaked back in the spring of 2015, April to May, check in money flow was very positive. That told us the institutions were buying the market. Now let's go to the power bar right at the top of the chart. Currently 116 stocks in the S&P 
have bullish power gauge ratings and 78 have bearish ratings. Now that's a positive differential, but it's contracted from where it was about two or three weeks ago when there were about 140 stocks versus less than 70. So it was two to one back there and it's no longer two to one. What does that mean? It means that fewer and fewer stocks are participating in the rally and have bullish potential. It's also reflected in the number of stocks making new highs. It spiked at 17% of all the stocks in the S&P. It's now much lower than that. So there's a little bit of caution in the air. But look at that breakout above that resistance level that had capped the market since April of 2015, over a year, almost a year and a half. That's formidable support for the market right now. 2130, formidable support. And then finally, let's go back down to the RSP, the equal weighted S&P versus the spider. The equal weighted S&P was underperforming the market from April of 2015 through late February. When I started out in Wall Street, they used to say, if the generals are leading the market, because you had General Motors, General Electric, General Telephone, General Instruments, but the soldiers are not following, that's an unhealthy market. So it's known as a breadth divergence. But using this technique, this one indicator, you don't have to go and check things like the McClellan Oscillator and Advanced Decline Statistics. It summarizes it. So when in late February, as the market was breaking out to the upside, the equal weighted S&P started outperforming the cap weighted S&P or the spider, that was very bullish and it remains that way today and since 2011 and even going back before then whenever the equal weighted S&P is underperforming the cap weighted S&P the market has tended to run into resistance and given you those declines either V or W shaped bottoms but when the equal weighted S&P is outperforming the spider the market is in healthy hands because the average stock in the S&P is participating in the rally. So the bottom line is, in my view, we're in a strong market. You want to buy dips. And we had one here just a few days ago where we went sideways to down last week, got oversold on our overbought, oversold indicator, and talked about timing, very important. Because no matter how good your fundamental research is, your timing always makes it better. And shaken money flow was positive. You want to buy those oversold conditions. Doesn't look like a deep oversold. You're not going to get a deep oversold when people are so skeptical about the market. People have been pulling money out of equities, putting it into bond funds. So the bottom line is we remain constructive on the market, looking for pullbacks which we're likely to get here in August and September as buying opportunities. Now let's look at one more market slide, which is the IWM Russell 2000 small cap index. Start with the relative strength versus the SPY. Underperforming from February of 2015 through late May. In late May, the Russell 2000, which are small and mid cap stocks, started outperforming the large cap spider ETF. That's a healthy indication of confidence in the market. Even though individuals are skeptics, even though institutions are scrambling to get invested, look up at the power bar. 708 stocks in the Russell 2000 with bullish ratings, only 221 with bearish ratings, over a three to one ratio and the IWM continues to make new highs with positive money flows. So from our point of view, the stock market is in strong hands and the rest of this webinar is going to show you how to find winning stocks and also those stocks that you want to avoid. Mark, this is this is really interesting for me because you know anyone who reads thoughts from the front line knows that uh, we tend to be fairly top down in our research services, and um, you know our readers would know that we're as a shop concerned uh, in general on a macro scale about 
plenty of things. The list is long. Central bank intervention, uh, debt levels, Europe's banking system, slow growth. I mean, it, it, it goes on and on. And that can sometimes be, even for us, a little, a little paralyzing. So to get a different technical viewpoint of the market, like you're, you're showing here, it is very helpful for us to keep us in check. Well, thank you for that, Ed, and, uh, and I think that's an important perspective for Malden readers. Uh, we're going to shift to another market guru here to kick off the learning portion of the webinar, and that's Warren Buffett, who has famously been quoted as saying, investors should be fearful when others are greedy, and greedy only when others are fearful. So let's look at a couple of examples of taking advantage of fear, and we're going to focus on small and mid-cap stocks since the IWM is outperforming. FFIV, F5 Networks was in a steep downtrend. We're going to show you a very uh, powerful um, market movement paradigm a little later in the webinar, so keep this chart in mind. But FFIV was out of favor, underperforming the market uh, into March or April of 2016. And then the money flow started coming into it. It started outperforming the market at the bottom of the chart. This is sort of a teaser, a preview of what we're going to teach you step by step my checklist. But at the bottom of the chart here is the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. It goes from red to yellow to green. When it's green, stock has the potential to outperform the market and usually does. So what happened in FFID? Well, with all that accumulation going on, and we know that because Chaikin Money Flow was green for almost five months, the stock spiked up to 125 back in late May on takeover rumors. And then it pulled back, and on that two-day Brexit panic, it pulled back to our lower volatility band and generated what we call an oversold buy signal. I owe this to Larry Williams, who was a mentor to me in terms of creating check and money flow back in the um, late 70s. If you believe in a discipline methodology, you can take advantage of fear, and here it is in very, very stark terms. You could have bought this stock under 110 and watched it move over the next month, month and a half, back up to a new six-month high above 125. It's a perfect example of what Warren Buffett's talking about. Here's a second example in a small cap stock called Gibraltar Industries symbol ROCK, which has been outperforming the market on balance since October. Right now, Chaikin Power Gauge is bullish. It's green at the bottom. It's outperforming the market. Money flow is strong. And on that Brexit pullback, my wife Sandy, who also gives webinars to our partners and to the Chaikin community, because she's mastered this very simple checklist, she calls it five steps to success in the market, she bought Gibraltar on that pullback. Using our screener, she found Gibraltar as small cap stock with all the right credentials, and she bought that two-day two -day pullback at $30, and I think she sold it uh, when it spiked up above the upper volatility band and then bought it back again uh, when it pulled down after an earnings report. So here's an example of Warren Buffett in real life. Be greedy when other people are fearful. Now, if I asked you what your most precious commodity was, some people might say it was gold or platinum or good health, which is all valid. But in reality, time is our most precious commodity. It just is not enough time. In this 24-7 world, whether it's in our personal lives or our investing lives, time is precious. And therefore, our biggest problem as investors and in our personal lives is information overload. Facebook, Google, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Instagram, you know the culprits to say nothing of your email inbox. And in the investing world, it's gurus on CNBC, it's newsletters, it's various financial websites, headlines in the press that 
challenge us. So at the center of this chart is the real crux of this presentation. How do you focus in the age of distraction? Because focus is the key to success in the investment business. How many of you have read Jack Schwager's Market Wizard books? If you have, give Jack a shout out by typing a big J in the question box, because I know many of you have. The common thread through all of these books for me is that every successful investor and trader that he's profiled has a disciplined methodology and is therefore focused on repeating that over and over and over again. So focus is really the key because focus leads to conviction and conviction enables you to pull the trigger and take advantage of those entry points that we just looked at. So our solution to the information overload problem is Chaikin Analytics for both iPad and desktop and we're going to use examples in the balance of this webinar taken from Chaikin Analytics. So how does Chaikin Analytics lead to more profitable trading and investing? It does this by giving you a directional edge. Now I ran an options department for five years, regional brokerage firm, over 250 brokers, tens of thousands of clients trading options and I can tell you that over 95% of them lost money and the reason was they didn't understand how important it was to have a directional edge when you trade options. It's also true for swing traders and surprisingly it's true if you're investing for your 401k plan or if you're a professional and we know there are a lot of professionals on the webinar today. A directional edge is important when you're handling and allocating your clients assets. So Chaikin gives you a directional edge by combining fundamentals with technicals in a 20-factor quantitative model making it easy to access and understand and then layers in six pairs of buy and sell signals for better entries and exits. Now all of this is encapsulated in this pyramid. And I think you'll agree we've been in volatile markets and volatile markets demand a discipline methodology. So at the top of this pyramid is our most valuable piece of intellectual property. Ed referred to it as the centerpiece, and he's correct. The Chaikin Power Gauge Rating. We also think industry group strength and sector strength is very important because it puts the wind at your back. And it's been documented by people like Zacks and Investors Business Daily and Standard & Poor's. At the bottom of the pyramid is at the heart of this webinar two technical indicators, Chaikin Money Flow and Chaikin Relative Strength, which when combined with the power gauge rating give you the best of all worlds. A very strong fundamental view combined with important technical indicators. And then in the middle, the sweet spot, Chaikin Buy and Sell Signals. Six pairs to help guide your timing. And if you're a blues fan as I am, uh, you remember Dr. John uh, from New Orleans. I had the pleasure of hearing him play live at Tippy Tina. His favorite, most popular, most famous song, I've been in the right place, but I must have been the wrong time. And how true that is, whether you're a trader or an investor, how many of us have put on options positions or uh, stock positions at the wrong time? And what happens? You come under stress, and if it's options, premium erosion is often fatal. So signals and timing are important. Now let's delve into the power gauge because to come away from this webinar believing that there is a discipline methodology that can help you make better investment decisions, you need to understand the power gauge rating and come away believing that it's sound, it's solid, it's proven. So the power gauge rating is a simple but powerful display. It looks like the gas gauge on your car. But please don't confuse simple with simplistic because, as I like to say, the power gauge rating is like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And it can be your GPS during earnings season, and that's how we're going to end up the webinar. Now, the reason I can speak about the power gauge rating with such confidence is as I said in the beginning, it re reflects the culmination of my life's work, everything that I've learned in 45 years on Wall Street. And it's a clear-cut summary of a stock's potential with a proven record of success. 
20 factors grouped into four components. And the reason the power gauge worked is because it's based on how Wall Street works. These are the factors that institutional investors look at every day to make buy and sell decisions. Now, they don't all look at each of these factors. The financial metrics, which are 35% of the model, the model is 85% fundamental and only 15% technical, are the kinds of value metrics that a Warren Buffett or a Bob Arnott would look at from research affiliates. Two premier examples, free cash flow and price to sales ratio. Now, the earnings factors are more volatile. Financial metrics don't change that often. But the earnings factors and the expert opinions can change and do change. So I've boxed in red earnings surprise. This is one of the things I learned from a colleague at Drexel Burnham named George Douglas back in the 1980s. George had one of the two top quantitative databases on Wall Street, and he did the premier research on earnings surprise and earnings estimate revisions and also how to roll them up to get group and sector analysis based on that. And what George Douglas taught me was that earnings surprises come in bunches. There's never just one of them. And we're going to see a lot of examples of that in the webinar. And equally as important, earnings surprises when a company reports better or worse than expected earnings lead analysts to raise or lower their earnings estimates. Wall Street analysts are still influential even though uh, the press would lead you to think otherwise. And it's been proven that earnings estimate revisions are the single biggest short-term driver of stock price movements. And we'll see examples of that in a minute in the charts that we're going to look at. So earnings surprise is a factor in the model. Earnings estimate revision and analyst ratings are a factor. And then we look at some other things like insider activity. We love to see insiders buying. And we'd rather not see a big short position. And my wife Sandy has mastered this. She makes it real simple. Looks at the power gauge and the relative strength and money flow. And then she likes to look at insider activity and short interest. So just looking at these couple of indicators can improve and hone your stock picking skills. Now, how has the power gauge performed? Well, we released it as a commercially available product in January of 2011. Research reports on 5,000 US equities updated nightly. And then in March of 2011, we launched an iPhone app and followed that up with our workstation, Chaken Analytics, in January of 2013. This performance curve, based on the Russell 3000 from 1999 through the end of 2015, combines the back-tested results with the real-time results. Now, the skeptics among you will be correct in saying, I've never seen a bad back-test in a presentation. That's correct. But the reality is, as you'll see on the next slide, the real-time results have been the equal of the back-tested results. So over a 16-year lifespan, the average very bullish stock in the Russell 2000, 3000, and we don't cherry-pick the tails, this is 428 stocks at any given point in time, have averaged almost a 20% annualized return, whereas the average very bearish stock, even after a seven-year bull market, is down almost 1%. In 2015, the results were very dramatic. The average very bearish stock in the Russell 3000 was down 17%. These are the stocks that caused you pain. Fracking stocks like Range Resources and Kinder Morgan, the rails, the cloud computing stocks. Small caps in general were down very big in 2015. The average very bullish stock down only 1% which was a heck of a lot better than the average stock in the Russell, which was down almost 8%. It's that ability to capture the difference between a very bearish stock's probable price performance and a very bullish stock that's at the heart of the success that the Power Gauge has brought to our partners and our clients. And we have two partnerships, one with NASDAQ and one with First Trust, which support the back-tested and real-time results. Two and a half years ago, NASDAQ stress-tested the Chaikin Power Gauge and asked us to create three co-branded NASDAQ Chaikin indexes. They're quotable on CNBC or Google or Bloomberg, and they basically 
apply this check-in methodology, somewhat akin to the checklist we're talking about today, to distill down a universe of stocks, large cap, small cap, and dividend achievers, using the check-in methodology to the best of the best. And all three of those indexes are outperforming their benchmarks since April of 2014. In the case of the dividend achiever and the small cap, very dramatic outperformance, almost a thousand basis points over that time span. These are portfolios that are rebalanced every 12 months. So there's no profit taking or pruning. Uh, they stay in place and they really prove out the check-in methodology. Yeah, and we're talking to ETF creators who are interested in licensing them to create ETFs around those indexes. Now with First Trust, we've actually got real money being managed based on a computer methodology that we developed. Over $40 million in three unit investment trusts sold only through brokers and investment advisors. Launched initially on December 7th with a 20 stock equally weighted portfolio. All three of the First Trust unit investment trusts are outperforming their benchmark, which is the S&P 500, in a period which I think all of us would agree was highly volatile. So real money, indexes that are quotable, and those back-tested results, to me that adds up to evidence that you should be paying attention because if you buy into the Chaikin Power Gauge methodology, you're putting the odds in your favor. So the first step on our checklist is what to buy, and that revolves around a pattern we call classic check and bulls. Power gauge rating is bullish, the stock is outperforming the market, and check and money flow is green, not red, indicating that institutions are aggressively accumulating the stock. So here's our poster child, United Health, largest healthcare company in America, for the classic check and bull. It was in a basing pattern until it broke out in February, started outperforming the market in late January because it didn't go down in that January, February W bottom. And then the power gauge turned bullish in mid-February, but look at the taken money flow. Consistently green, and if you look on the chart, this is our earnings module, the way we make earnings profitable for you instead of a source of concern. Each of the last four quarters, positive earnings surprise. How do we know that? The EPS icon is colored green, not red. And along the way, oversold buy signals. This is a new eight-day low in a stock with a bullish power gauge rating that gets oversold. And here's a stock that just keeps on making new highs, and it happens to be one of the 20 stocks in each of the three First Trust Unit Investment Trust. So we found this the computer found it, and you can find it. Now here's another example of a classic chicken bull. It's Tyson's Food, and it too got put into the first unit investment trust that we created with First Trust on December 7th. The stock was around 50. That's a pretty mundane company, and it's been in each of the three iterations of the trust, and it's gone from 50 to 75. It's had a 50% move, and along the way you've had buying opportunities. It's a pretty big sell-off after the a very positive earnings surprise where it spiked up back in May. And then it regrouped, and just two days ago it reported another positive earnings surprise and made another new high. So what do we learn from all this? Well, first of all, George Douglas back in 1982 had it right. Earnings surprises come in bunches. They're like cockroaches. There's never just one of them. I wish I had coined that line, but someone else did. So now let's look at a classic check and bear. But before we do that, I want to show you a chart which should give you confidence that this is not just a flash in the pan methodology. This chart is an idealized chart developed by Richard Wyckoff almost 100 years ago. He was the foremost market technician, market analyst of his day. And he developed this idealized way that stocks move up and down a basing phase that he called accumulation and then a breakout. We keep seeing it on the charts. Keep this in mind as we go through the examples. 
because this is the way stocks move up and down. And it gives, gives me confidence because these patterns are really based on human nature and the way people with different time horizons enter and exit stocks. And human nature certainly hasn't changed in 100 years. And that's why I'm confident that this eclectic 20-factor model will continue to work as it has in the five and a half years since we launched it. Now, on to the classic chicken bear. Turn the bullish pattern on its head. Bearish power gauge rating, weak relative to the market, chicken money flow green, red, not green. And we're going to use Tiffany as our poster child in the beleaguered retail sector, high-end portion of the retail sector, not a good place to have been over the last year. Power gauge rating has been bearish on Tiffany for over a year and a half. The stock has dropped dramatically from the 100 level all the way down to 58. And along the way, there were opportunities to get out of the stock based on our signals and the fact that relative strength and the power gauge were agreeing, and the stock continues to underperform the market. And here's your Wyckoff pattern on the downside. This is really significant because as night follows day, we're going to get into a bear market at some point. But along the way, even in this bull market, we've seen this pattern over and over and over again. We're going to see this in Kinder Morgan and Macy's and hundreds of other stocks that have gone through a distribution phase and then broken down. So keep the pattern in mind because it keeps repeating over and over and over again. So how do you find these stocks? That's a question we get asked all the time. Well, in Chaken Analytics, there are two ways to find these stocks. One is through our hot lists, computer-generated lists that find all the bullish or bearish stocks or stocks that have turned bullish or bearish this week and a whole series of other lists based on the signals and money flow and relative strength. We make it very easy and there are some of the names we've been talking about, Kinder Morgan, Tiffany, um, Union Pacific, Tesla. These are This isn't a current slide but most of these stocks still have that bearish rating. Now a second quote from Warren Buffett really sums up the balance of the presentation to come. Warren Buffett has said they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street so you don't have to swing at every pitch. You can wait for your pitch, what my friend Christopher Castro Viejo calls the fat pitch. I call it the ideal setup. And the ideal setup really is the encapsulation of my checklist. So we have three patterns that make up this ideal setup. The first we call the dynamic duo. It's the combination of the Chaikin power gauge rating and Chaikin relative strength. The dynamic duo finds big winners and losers. Superior returns come from stocks that are outperforming the market. If the fundamental support it, if the power gauge is bullish, those stocks tend to accelerate to the upside and comfortably be bought on weakness. Now, one caveat, relative strength does stand alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I think you're all familiar with the concept of momentum stocks. Stocks that catch the favor of the market, like Tesla, LinkedIn at times, Amazon, and so forth, where the fundamentals may be so rich that the power gauge isn't bullish. Those stocks can go up for a long period of time. But be aware that if you own these stocks, typically they have a very high price to sales ratio. That's probably the most predictive factor in the whole model. You're on a high wire without a safety net. And as soon as something goes wrong, and inevitably it does, you're going to fall off that high wire. And the pain financially and psychologically is dramatic. So you need to practice good money management, use stops, and not be stubborn. Now, here's an example of a stock where the dynamic duo was strong from early November on. How do we define that? The power gauge turned bullish in late October. The stock started outperforming the market in early November. You broke out of that Wyckoff base, and now it's a classic Wyckoff pattern. Aerospace stock moves from 120 to about 180. And everything was going along pretty well. 
positive earnings surprise back in May, propelled the stock to a new high, pullbacks along the way, and another positive earnings surprise just five days ago. August 4th, last week, they reported better than expected earnings, but look what's changed, and you've got a red arrow there. Shaken money flow was negative when you made that new high at the upper volatility band. For the technicians in the audience, these are modified Keltner bands, they're not Bollinger bands. They don't breathe as much, and they're good intermediate targets. Now, I've got that red arrow there because very rarely in Wall Street do you get a chance to sell a stock at its 52-week high with any confidence that you're not leaving a lot on the table. In the case of HII, very appropriate with the power gauge now neutral for the first time in six months and negative check in money flow at a new high at the upper band to take some money off the table. Get out of that position. If it's in a 401k plan, there are no tax consequences. If you're a trader, it's a fairly easy decision. Now, here's an example of the dynamic duo on the downside, and it's a painful one for a lot of investors who believe in solar energy. This is Sun Edison. Merrill Lynch had a buy rating on this back in 2015 at a price of 28. But this was a highly leveraged company. Power gauge rating turned bearish at a price of around 27, 28. And then shortly thereafter, the stock started underperforming the market. That's when the dynamic duo came into play. On the downside, especially when you see weak check in money flow, notice again how when the stock made its new high above 30, check in money flow was already negative. What did that tell us? It told us that the institutions were selling under the cover of strength. And along the way, you had negative earnings surprises, tons of opportunity to get out of the stock or go short. And sadly, Merrill Lynch put out a sell recommendation of $3, but that's better than having waited for the company to file for bankruptcy. This is an example of why you need an objective way to analyze stocks that's independent of investment banker relationships and so forth, and the power gauge rating does that for you. Look how it would have kept you out of trouble. Can you see the trouble that people can get in when they believe in a concept instead of a company. Well, we got this testimonial from someone who attended a conference where we were exhibiting, sponsored by the Options Industry Council back in May in California, and he came up to our booth and he said, Mark, I'm an advisor at Merrill Lynch, and Merrill Lynch kept recommending Sun Edison all the way down, so I bought it for my clients at 15, and if I'd been using Chaikin, I could have saved myself and my clients a lot of pain and more importantly money and it can do that for you imagine what it'd be worth to you to eliminate those one or two stocks like Sun Edison or Kinder Morgan or Tiffany from your portfolio in a given year your profit is going to go way up your returns are going to improve you're putting the odds on your side now the second sort of concept that embodies this ideal setup is, I think, the key to making and keeping profits on Wall Street. And we call it spotting personality changes. You don't want to be on the wrong side of that door when Jack Nicholson's coming through with the ax, whether you're a trader or an investor. So how do we define a personality change? It's a stock where the relative strength indicator goes from green to red or red to green and it's so important and the reason it's so important is we tend to be stubborn particularly with our investments we fall in love with stocks we put our feet in cement arguably you could make money in Wall Street if you followed my good friend Marty Zweig who sadly passed prematurely who boiled it down to just two simple things watch the Fed and listen to the market and what does listen to the market mean? Marty was both a technician and a quantitative analyst, very successful money manager and hedge fund manager. Well, listening to the market means not putting your feet in cement. And the best way we know to listen to the market is to follow that relative strength indicator. We look back over 26 weeks, just like Investor's Business Daily does. 
but instead of clogging your head with numbers contributing to information overload, we turn it into a red-green heat map, and it has persistence. So here's an example of another small cap stock. Again, one that my wife Sandy has actually bought and sold successfully, which had a bullish personality change back in February. How do we know that? That indicator went from red to green. The power gauge was already bullish. Now you have the market agreeing with the model. That's what we call the dynamic duo. And that's so important because no matter how good your fundamental research is, no matter how good your quantitative model is, if the market doesn't agree with you, at best it's dead money, and at worst you're in financial pain. So this small cap stock, Quad Graphics, perfect example of the ideal setup. Money flow was strong from February on, institutions were buying it or smaller investors. Early in the breakout from that Wyckoff base, there were two oversold buy signals. And then along the way, you had what we call momentum breakouts. Now, we'll show you a couple of examples, but momentum breakouts have to be treated differently. They're one of the signals in our system because you can't just go out and buy a momentum breakout because most of the time, a stock will consolidate for three to eight days sideways to down, and that's when you want to be buying it. And in this case, you had two opportunities ahead of that big earnings report and the gap up. So here's a stock that's gone from $10 when the personality change took place to 29 since February, a market that really is up only 3 or 4% in the IWM and the S&P. This stock is up almost 200%. And you can find these in Chaken Analytics over and over again with our screener or in our hot list. So that first green arrow is your Brexit buying opportunity. There's Warren Buffett again. Be greedy when people are fearful. But it wasn't much of a pullback. It pulled back just to the 21-day average, which is that center line, but with positive Chaken money flow. And that was at about $21, and it spiked up all the way to $29.50. Now, my wife Sandy, on a webinar that she did on June 22nd, used our screener to find stocks in strong industry groups with bullish price-to-sales ratio, power gauge rating, short interest, and insider activity. That's what she cares about, and money flow and relative strength. And she came up with only nine names, and one of them was Quad Graphics at 2153, and she bought in. It can be as simple as that. Can, can you see how simple this can be if you don't overthink things, if you don't interject your biases and your fears into the stock timing and stock selection process? If you can, give me a little shout out and say, uh, type a big yes in the question box because it's important that this concept be clear. Now, here's an example of a bearish personality change, and I see a lot of people are typing yes into the question box, so I'm glad that we're getting through to you here. Starbucks, uh, a stock we all know, probably all shop there, buy there, I don't know what you call it, eat there, drink there. Great company, terrible stock. You had a bearish personality change in February. The stock has basically gone nowhere ever since. The company is rolling out new products, new drinks, you name it, to try and recapture profitability and growth and market share. The bottom line is the industry is weak, the stock's in a weak technical trend, and the power gauge is bearish. But that personality change is your call to action. When you see that, Get out of that stock, use the money to buy something that has better potential that's likely to outperform the market. Now, the third pattern that constitutes the ideal setup we call monitoring stealth buying and selling with check and money flow. Institutions are paranoid about the market not knowing what they're doing. Their orders are large enough that they can't be executed on one day, and therefore they try and hide their tracks. So here's an example, again, another small cap stock that my wife Sandy found. I hate to keep emphasizing this, but she's doing it every day, 15 minutes a day, 
beating the market. Has been for three years, never bought a stock in her life up until three years ago, just mutual funds. So this is Central Garden, stealth accumulation. Stock went sideways all through February, but look at the check in money flow. It went sideways between late March and late April. Shake and money flow stayed green. It went sideways between May and June. Pulled back. That green triangle is where Sandy bought it when it had a negative reaction to an earnings report. And then out of the blue, it spiked up to 21 from 18. Couldn't figure out why, so Sandy sold it. Took her quick 18% profit. Turns out SunTrust, major Florida bank and money management firm, upgraded it from hold to buy and there aren't too many analysts who follow this stock so it had a big impact and the stock has continued higher bullish personality change dynamic duo stealth accumulation that sums up the ideal setup or that fat pitch now here's an example of stealth distribution just like we saw in Huntington Ingress McDonald's and, and it's another example of relative strength standing alone. The fundamentals did not support that move in McDonald's based on the power gauge rating from 95 to 130. But money flow and relative strength were strong until the stock made that fatal final new high at 130, upper volatility band. Can you see how that looks just like Huntington Inglis? These patterns repeat over and over again gave you the opportunity to sell McDonald's right at the all-time high. How rare is that in Wall Street? In 50 years, I think I can count on the fingers of one hand the times that I've been able to do that. And usually doing it is painful because the stock keeps going. But when money flow is negative at an upper band, that's time to take money off the table. Now this was followed by a bearish power gauge rating as the stock started breaking down and then that dynamic duo of relative strength being negative. So here's the check in methodology, the checklist in action. You could have gotten out of the stock at a high when it broke down. You could have started thinking about where you might want to buy put options or short the stock but it's a stock to avoid. Now at the same time you were selling McDonald's in May or in June or July, if you like the fast food industry, you could have been buying Jack in the Box. Bullish personality change in May. Power gauge for about two months was bullish. Very strong check in money flow, positive earnings surprise. You could have bought the stock at 75 on the way to 97 while McDonald's was going from 130 down to 115. Now something has changed. Jack in the Box reported earnings a week ago, but analysts are starting to cut their estimates. It was a positive earnings surprise and the stock spiked up from 87.5 to 97.5. But Jack in the Box is making no progress here, and part of the reason is the guidance they gave along with those earnings, causing analysts to start lowering their estimates. Now remember I said that analyst estimate revision, single biggest driver of short-term stock price movement. So not a clear-cut sell like McDonald's or HII, but certainly a reason to have a close stop if you have an investment position on or an opportunity to just take your profits and say thank you. But again, same industry group, totally different picture. Now, we talked about six pairs to buy and sell signals. Ed D'Agostino told me timing is very important to the Malden community. And we've looked at many of them, but let's just focus on why the signals are important. The headline from this slide, the takeaway is that to trade more profitably, you should follow the signals. So we're looking at Varian Medical and the very strong medical products group where the power gauge has been bullish since February and it's been mostly outperforming the market with positive money flow. But the key here is that you could have bought it on these oversold buy signals in March at around 77, rally to 85, and then again in June, again at about 77. But this time you got a very strong reaction to a positive earnings surprise and the stock spiked all the way from 88 up to 95 and has stayed strong. 
the takeaway here is that any discipline based on proven analytics gives you conviction to trade and pull the trigger and that's much better than trading on your emotions. Now on the downside we're going to use Macy's. Power gauge has been bearish for over a year and a half. You've got an industry group, the retailers, that's getting beaten up by Amazon. Bricks and mortar retailers have been a terrible place to be. And along the way there were sell signals that you could have used to get out of Macy's by put options and a series of negative earnings surprises. And by the way, Macy's reports, as does Nordstrom and Kohl's, before the opening tomorrow. And the expectation is more negative earnings surprises. When I pulled this chart earlier today with the market up, Macy's was down 3% heading into the earnings. Now, every so often a company will turn around the ship. There have been a year's worth of negative earnings surprises, but the likelihood is that the stock continues in a downward trend. Now, again, how do you find these signals? Well, we have an alerts dashboard for any list or ETF or industry group or universe index. You see these bullish or bearish alerts. This is um, the bullish alerts from my the list of stocks that I follow on July 12th for a webinar that I was giving that day. And at the top of the list was a momentum breakout in Decker. Decker makes UGS. They've had their ups and downs, as you can see. But on the chart where that arrow is back here in July, you had a momentum breakout. Now, I said earlier that a momentum breakout has to be treated differently. You have to wait for a pullback of three to eight days, and you got it contained by the 21-day average. So if you bought in here, it's at around 60. You got lucky because Decker's reported a positive earnings surprise and the stock spiked up all the way to 68.5. So sometimes preparation leads to good luck. Thomas Jefferson put it a little more elegantly. He said, the better prepared we are, the luckier we get. So there's an example of a signal working. Now, you can use our stock screener to find stocks that meet your criteria. In this case, I ran a screen this morning to find potential winners. So we've got the Russell 3000 universe. I'm looking for stocks that have a very bullish power gauge rating with a strong earnings surprise component and money flow and relative strength strong. And I'm looking at only small and mid-cap stocks. And two of the stocks we've looked at already, Quad and Gibraltar, are on there, as well as a stock called WellCare Health, which was a big, big winner. With a power gauge turned bullish in February and the stock started outperforming the market, the price of the stock was about 80, check and money flow was strong. It went from 80 to 115, one of the best performing stocks in the healthcare sector. If you had used that screener at any time in the last five months, you would have found WellCare. That's the power of check and analytics. It's not done for you research. It's even better than that. It's empowering. You've got the tools to day in and day out find winning stocks and know when to buy or sell. As you see on this chart, you had a Brexit entry point in June when the stock sold down from 110 to about 103 and then it immediately turned around and made a new high. Now we talked about playing good defense. Good defense improves investment performance. So what is good defense? How do you play it? Well. Herb Greenberg, who used to write for thestreet.com and for cnbc.com, is now doing short sell research for institutions. But in January of 14, he wrote a column entitled, It's the Stocks You Don't Own That Matter. And that's how you play good defense, by reducing risk and avoiding mistakes, by avoiding weak industry groups, by knowing what stocks not to buy and by improving your performance by eliminating potential losers from your portfolio before they blow up. So here are three examples of stocks you didn't want to own in 2015. Kinder Morgan was our poster child for the classic bear. A lot of people were seduced by that 20% yield at $40. Uh, dollars. I mean, anybody who thinks a 20% yield is sustainable is kidding themselves. The power gauge was bearish for a year and a half. And look at those wonderful 
overbought sell signals that could have gotten you out of the stock if you had overstayed your welcome or given you three great put buying opportunities here, here, and here. Now the power gauge is neutral. Warren Buffett's buying the stock. The money flow is strong. It tried to break out. Could be the start of a Wyckoff base. We don't know yet, but it is outperforming the market. So again, don't keep your feet in cement. If you were following Chaikin and you were bearish from 40 all the way down to 13 and you see that bullish personality change and positive money flow, put your bear suit away on Kinder Morgan and look elsewhere. Chipotle, classic poster child for how Chaikin can help avoid pain and suffering. Power Gauge actually turned bearish before the E. coli health issues surfaced. The stock was around 690, 700. In short order, they reported a negative earnings surprise, started underperforming the market, and then the E. coli problem hit. But even after it hit, you had a money flow sell signal back here in November at a price of about 600 on the way to 380. And along the way, ideal setups, which are easily captured through options trades with limited risk. Uh, when I say easy, I'm not contradicting Warren Buffett's partner, Charlie Munger, who said, if anybody thinks investing is easy, they're crazy. What I'm saying is, if you follow the discipline, the setups are easy to follow, and they're going to work two-thirds of the time because the power gauge is on your side when these signals crop up. And then finally, Cavium, a semiconductor stock where the power gauge has been bearish for almost a year. You had a negative personality change back in November, and the stock's been in a downtrend ever since. But even in that downtrend, ahead of earnings, you had some really good put buying setups with check and money flow week. And Joe Bacella, who kicked off the webinar, is the head of our customer success team. He does onboarding sessions every day along with Michelle Greenblatt and the rest of the team. And in one of his sessions with subscribers, he suggested that Cavium was an interesting put candidate. And ahead of earnings back there in June, one of our clients, one of our subscribers, gave us this testimonial. Today I made my biggest profit yet from taking 150% from buying put options on Cavium a few days earlier because they reported a negative earnings surprise. Now the final segment of our checklist in the webinar is I think the most exciting. I call this the timing secret that produces huge returns. It starts by identifying bullish or bearish candidates with Chaikin power gauge and relative strength. It uses earnings season to your advantage to supercharge your profits because using the power gauge rating, you've got an edge knowing that the stock is likely to beat or disappoint Wall Street analysts. And then you use check and buy and sell signals ahead of earnings for low risk entry points. Now, earnings season's anathema to some people. They hate it because of the uncertainty and the volatility. We think volatility is an opportunity if you have something like the Chaikin Power Gauge as a GPS to guide you. There's a lot of speculation in the media around earnings. You'll see CNBC and Fast Money and Kramer talking about whether a stock is going to beat or disappoint. But if you know with some degree of certainty the likelihood of meeting, beating, or disappointing, then you can craft strategies like we suggested in Netflix back in March and then again in July where you've got a rally up ahead of earnings, we got a sell signal, and then you had a negative reaction to earnings. The Netflix is a wounded bird in my opinion. I won't go into it on this webinar. Anybody wants to email me and I'll let you know why I think that. But you had two ideal setups back in April and then again in July ahead of earnings reports we had a very negative reaction. The stock dropped anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, and people who bought put options had a really low risk, high probability, profitable trade. Now, instead of buying Netflix, if you wanted to stay exposed to media stocks, you could have been buying Comcast. So while Netflix was going sideways to down, Comcast was going from 60 to 68, 
very often runs up ahead of the Olympics because NBC has been a long time uh, broadcaster of the Olympic Games very often peaks during the Olympic season. Be aware of that because it sort of played out the interest. But you could have been buying, use the Brexit entry as an ideal setup with positive money flow to buy Comcast at 61 on the way to 68. You could have also been buying Sony in the consumer electronics area because of all this Pokemon Go craze there's a focus on gaming companies and Sony had a bullish power gauge rating outperforming the market positive money flow and you got a buy signal just two weeks ago with the stock under 30 ahead of earnings I call that the ideal option setup and they reported better than expected earnings spiked up 10 percent you're out of your trade and it can be as easy as that now, I'd like to show you a mini case study to show you how important an unbiased discipline like the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating is during earnings season. Back in March, PVH, an apparel company that makes Calvin Klein jeans and Tommy Hilfinger, was due to report earnings. This happens to be another stock that the computer picked for the First Trust 20 stock portfolios. So the headline on street.com on March 22nd at 4.04 was PVH stock closed down ahead of tomorrow's earnings. Jim Cramer poured fuel on the fire at 4.58 when he said, exercise caution with PVH ahead of earnings. Now this isn't a knock on Jim Cramer because he's talking about checking money flow every week on his Mad Money show, but this is what really happened. The next morning, PVH reported better than expected earnings, and the stock was up 7% in the pre-market. Should you have been exercising caution ahead of the earnings report? Well, the power gauge was bullish. Look at that money flow where the green, first green arrow is ahead of the earnings report, and a history of positive earnings surprises even when it was in a downtrend. And those earnings surprises have continued so you spiked up and kept going, pulled back because it's a volatile stock, rallied again after a positive earnings surprise, two-day Brexit pullback. Only 4% of their business is in the UK and people were spooked that nobody would buy jeans in Europe. Crazy. Great buying opportunity with the stock all the way down to 84 and it's now rallied back up to the 9800 level. Our earnings surprise factor, our earnings alert is bullish. How do we know that? There's a green exclamation point. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means analysts are raising their estimates ahead of Wednesday, August 24th's earnings report. Likelihood is, as difficult as it's been for apparel stocks like Under Armour, and Ralph Lauren, that PVH is going to report another positive earnings surprise. Is it a guarantee? Of course not. That's why options are the ideal way to play these earnings surprises because you limit your risk to the cost of the option. Now we got a testimonial from Eric M back in March and that time frame work. Been using Chaikin Analytics for several weeks and have already closed out trades for gains of 70 and 115 percent. But here's the key. Over the years, I've tried different software packages and programs. Chaikin Analytics is by far the most straightforward analysis product I've ever used. Now, an, here are a couple of, a, of dramatic examples of negative earnings surprises where we actually tweeted or wrote about them in our weekly Market Insights newsletter. LinkedIn gave us a reversal sell signal ahead of their earnings report in January. We actually put this in a group of eight stocks that we said to be out of or short ahead of earnings and they offered horrendous guidance and the stock dropped 50 percent from 200 to 100. People who bought put options are just over the moon at that point point. and the stock was going nowhere until the stock market's equivalent of a rich uncle came in. Microsoft made what I consider to be an outrageous cash offer goosed by Salesforce competing for LinkedIn 
and the stock eventually rallied up. But you would have been long gone taking your profit multiples of 100% if you had bought the puts. And on the same day that LinkedIn reported, another stock we highlighted called Tableau Software, symbol DATA, had given a reversal sell two weeks before earnings. On the exact same day, the exact same pattern, the stock dropped 50%. <clears throat> but here's what happens when you don't have a rich uncle. Tableau has gone nowhere since that February, late January earnings report. Likelihood is if Microsoft or Salesforce hadn't come around, LinkedIn would look exactly the same. So some very dramatic examples. Now you can find these with our stock screener. For a webinar I did last week, I screened for all stocks in the Russell 3000 with a bullish rating and a positive earnings surprise factor that would do to report earnings the next day. And I narrowed it down to these 12 stocks, one of which was Priceline at a price of 1351 with a history of positive earnings surprises and sure enough, a few days later, Priceline reported better than expected earnings. It spiked from 1350 all the way to 1425. You can find these stocks using our screener, better than expected earnings by about 10%, and stocks tend to spike up when that happens. We got this testimonial from another new user, 400% return in two weeks. What's interesting about this is these are stocks we never talked about on webinars or in our training sessions or on my market letter. Torsten found these himself using the screener and our options play module, which I'll just show you briefly at the end of the webinar. He says, it's indeed the first tool I've used that delivers what is promised. Now, as a bonus, which we can't get into on this webinar, you can also use our group and sector ranks to find winning ETFs and stocks. We rank the nine select spider sector ETFs by the number of bullish versus bearish power gauge ratings, healthcare, energy, financial, and technology are right at the top. And then you can drill down, look how many healthcare ETFs there are. You want to find the ones with the best balance between bullish and bearish power gauge ratings. Now, I just highlighted the IBB, which is one of the most popular ETFs. They have more bearish than bullish power gauge ratings, wouldn't you rather be in the medical device ETF, which has Varian in it, and Intuitive Surgical, than focus on the IBB, which has more bearish than bullish stocks. So now you know my checklist with that bonus that we can get into in another webinar about how to use group and sector strength to find winning stocks and ETFs. And all of this is wrapped up into Chaken Analytics with options play, the screener, earnings alerts, and now intraday charts. This testimonial, I think, is a nice coda to the one that we used from John Walden to begin the webinar. The reason is Steve Godwin is a friend. He's the designer who made our Connecticut house great, helped make our Philadelphia house great, and he wants to learn how to be successful in the stock market. He's the antithesis of John Walden. He's a novice to the stock market. But after becoming a Chaken Analytics user, <clears throat> he gave us this testimonial. I'm only slightly embarrassed that he called me a genius, but you take credit wherever you can get it. He said, the dream team, the two of you are the dream team in so many ways. The genius of Mark to create this functional system and the brilliance of Sandy to learn the stuff and present it with such frankness simplicity and caring. I think I can learn this amazing thing too. So thank you, Steve, for that great testimonial. Now, Chaken Analytics for iPad and desktop is normally $1,950 for an annual subscription. <clears throat> As a webinar special exclusive for the Malden Economics readers, we're taking $300 off the price of Chaken Analytics, reducing the cost to only $1,650. Go to chakenanalytics.com slash Malden. I think Joe Bacella is going to put that into the chat box. That offer expires Sunday, August 14th, so take advantage of that. And Joe, if you type that into the chat box, everybody can see what that looks like. Now, in addition to everything we've talked about on this webinar, the Chaken team adds value to your subscription. 
We do small group and one-on-one -on -one tutorials to help you understand what's in Chaikin and how to use it and get set up. You get John Schlitz's daily morning insights, my weekly market insights newsletter, which features my market commentary plus strong and weak groups, and a bullish or bearish stock of the week. Now, last week, my bearish stock of the week was Under Armour. It had just reported earnings and had a very bad reaction and then rallied up and retraced part of that decline. I used our options play module, which we license because it's so good. I didn't want to build it. And we found a vertical put spread with a fabulous risk-reward ratio for a stock that was at 40. The f September expiration, 23rd of September, 40 and a half put long and the 36 put short. For $150, you can control $4,000 worth of Under Armour for about six weeks. And if the stock is at 36, there's a 200% return with limited risk. This is a great strategy. Vertical put spreads, as you know, can reduce your cost and you can find them easily in Chaikin. So one final testimonial, 10x return in five days. In the five business days I've been using Chaikin, I've paid for my subscription tenfold. Please extend my thanks to the entire Chaikin team. And that's really, team is the whole key. I started this with Sandy, two of us. There are now 27 of us. We're dedicated to your success. And I would like to give you one final inducement to take advantage of the Chaikin Analytics platform. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, as an added bonus, the first 10 people who subscribe will get a one-on-one -on -one telephone session with me after you've learned the system in our onboarding session so that you can ask questions about anything that's on your mind. I'm going to click on the link here to show you how easy it is to subscribe to Chaikin Analytics. Just click on the link, you get to our shopping cart with the Malden promo discount already entered, type in your credit card, do it tonight and you can be on one of our onboarding sessions tomorrow. We do them every day at 2 o'clock, I believe, and be up and running by the weekend with Chaikin Analytics. So with that, I'd like to thank Ed D'Agostino, John Malden, the whole team at Malden Economics for making this webinar such a big success. And Ed, do you have any wrap-up comments you'd like to make before we wind down the webinar? Uh, just to say thank you, Mark. I, uh, you know, I really appreciate the presentation. I appreciate you partnering with us. It's always a, a great pleasure for me and, and my organization when we can deliver to our readers something of, of great value. I think that your price uh, is fair when you consider everything you get with uh, Chicken Analytics. I mean, you get such a, a simple presentation of a sophisticated system behind you to give you edge. Um, like, like I said before, I use it personally. I look at it every day. Um, I'm really pleased to be, to be working with you on this, and I hope everyone sees the value. So th thanks to uh, all of our readers for attending. I appreciate it. Ed, thank you very much for that. We, we really look forward to a long partnership with Malden Economics and your readers. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Joe Bacella, who's going to uh, wind down the webinar. Thank you. All right. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you so much. And again, uh, very nice job there, Mark. Um, all right. So uh, to please do make sure to take advantage of Mark's offer. Again, uh, this will be a full year to Chaken Analytics for 1650, uh, chakenanalytics.com forward slash Malden. Um, as Mark mentioned, we do host every afternoon at two o'clock Eastern time, a an onboarding webinar available for all of our subscribers where we really help show you how you can customize this based on your investment approach, whether you're swing trading or managing a longer portfolio. Uh, we really love to have you get in the door and make sure that you get off, uh, hit the ground running. Um, so with that said, uh, you can give us a call at 877-697-6783, um, or you can, again, visit our website, chakenanalytics.com forward slash Malden. Uh, you'll see the promo code applied just like Mark had shown. So on behalf of the entire Chaken Analytics team, we want to thank you very much for coming out. As a reminder, we did record this webinar, so we will be sending a copy of this out to everyone. Uh, you'll see this in your inbox tomorrow morning. So again, thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow for the onboard session.